looking to throw just a couple stop routes as the two edge rushers combine pick up something instead pass rush ball pops out young's not gonna get back on it for him as well as shepherd as it's stockton right down the middle go over the top here that's bateman with a step on a debo over the top and by the diving defender with the running backs coming back in this one and edwards wanted nothing to do with aj dillon as we have the read option chuba hubbard can slip and slide into the end zone awareness and play wreck from time out there as there goes cruz speeding by saint juiced behind winters look for a block which we get from winters and there's the shoulder again we have this the quick stop and what decision was that from young it now gives the saints an opportunity as they throw it straight to stockton a quick turnover once again he's trying to get to the outside cruz will slow us down downfield or not let's go up top for the tall guy and a great adjustment on the back shoulder throw as we'll send the blitz here it's picked up well they go back for cruz and saint juiced he forgot how to tackle field as Barry slips by the corner that barely gets there in time. A couple minutes left in this one back to black deep downfield and they've got him for the touchdown. And we walk away with a big dominant win over the Saints, though there were some things that were a little concerning. And coming off our fourth win in a row that saw the offense really look Fantastic. 43 points were put up, including 17 in the second quarter. The defense, for the most part, they were actually really good. It was four plays we gave up, and unfortunately, all four of those plays either were directly the touchdown or on one of them was a 60-yard run down to around the two and then immediately walked in the next play. So all in all, we are looking good. But against the Saints team that only had two wins, that is expected. And as we move into today's game, that's expected, though, even more as we face the Lions, who are 1-8, and eight, and this starts our two-game stretch of NFC North games for some reason. But we just got above 500, but this is not a game to overlook by any means. The Detroit Lions have an 89-rated offense, an 85-rated defense. If you go to break down their team, they are not doing very good offensively. That seems to be where a majority of their struggles are. Everything is bottom 10 points per game, passing yards, rushing yards, defense, slightly better. 23rd in points per game, 15th in passing yards per game, and then back down to 26 in rushing yards per game. But for us, we have a breakout opportunity for one of our receivers. And the debate was really just between two guys, Bateman or the rookie in Faust. Very interested to see who we have here. Are we going to get an indication? No, still nothing. Who's it for? It is Bateman. He's had a really good couple games. He's got the deep ball going with this team. And he's wanting three plus touchdowns or 150 total yards in this game now on top of that we've also seen some up and down play from our offensive line in the last few weeks but they kept us for the most part pretty clean in the last game so in a way they kind of have their own breakout opportunity the amount of yards rushing that we have today against the lions will determine how much xp each of our o-linemen earn so we need to get that going as well as continue letting the pass go as bateman wants that 150 and honestly the simplest solution here is run the ball a whole lot get ourselves down to the goal line and then throw it to bateman for a touchdown that would be how we could accomplish everything we'll see how the actual flow of the game goes but before we talk about our opponent and their roster we got to talk a little bit about ours glenn faust the rookie receiver his dev trait is a super star Though as he's only a 76 overall right now, his abilities not really lining up great, but it's still something that we might be able to utilize a little bit. Receivers with this ability make sharper cuts and frequently win contested catches when covered by linebackers and linemen. Now he typically plays an outside receiver, but maybe we get towards the end zone, send him maybe to the inside or send him on slants, get that matchup. And as it says, it will be a nightmare for the defense. 
But now to actually get to our opponents today, Jared Goff is still their quarterback in 82 overall. At running back, it's Jameer Gibbs first and foremost. Though they also have a young running back in Malik Bethel, third year out of TCU, that could definitely do well if subbed in. As for the receiving group, Amon Ross St. Brown really is the guy for him. Behind him, you have a second-year receiver in Marquise Cook and then Donovan Peoples-Jones. And for some reason, Jamison Williams way down here at four. He just clearly is not doing very well and, as many have argued, kind of a bust. Though at tight end, who was not a bust? Sam Laporta. Stockton, Hodgins, they've got to lock him down today. And even the rookie at safety in Tyler Edwards. They've got to make plays against a very good tight end. Now getting to the trenches, Trevor Penning starts him off at left tackle with a 74. They also have a rookie in Kurt Kramer, a 73, who probably should be seeing the start over Penning. Move inside, Jonah Jackson, a 79. At center, Frank Ragnow. They also have a decent backup in Froholt. Getting to the opposite side, Stan Simpson, a very young offensive line, a 76. And then Panay Suell, a 96. So two key spots at right tackle and center, and then some decent filler throughout. As for their defense, it starts off with Drake Jackson, a 76. Opposite side, Aiden Hutchinson. We know that he could perform. Down the middle, they're a little light. Aleem McNeil, a 79. Then Emmett Tatum, second-year player out of OU. Edge backer, they got Cam Thompson, an 81, third-year player. Opposite, Leo Chanel, 77, or Leo Chanel. Remember having him in one of the state onlys. Jack Campbell and Isaiah Simmons, the off-ball backers. Getting to the DBs. Charvarius Ward in 89, then Dante Jackson. So a very new group of DBs here for the Lions. Clark Phillips rounds out that group. Free safety, they have Quandre Diggs, 79, and then Brian Branch, 85. All in all, this is a team that has a lot of key guys, but the filler, maybe they're the ones that are letting things slip through the cracks. And hopefully those cracks, we find ourselves gashing for a lot of yards today or picking up sacks, whatever they may be. Big plays, that's what I want to see against the 1-8 and eight Detroit Lions. Get ourselves to 6-4 and four and move even closer to the Falcons that we face in a few more weeks. Let's get this road battle underway as Ford boots us off at Ford Field. It will be a touchback. And with nine touchdowns, five interceptions on the year for Goff, very interested to see how they get going. Are they going to be a lot more run heavy, pass heavy, kind of how they decide to work with what skill guys they have available. We obviously all know Jameer Gibbs, he could get things going both on the ground and through the air. So they have options. Their offensive line, pretty solid. Just depends on who's going to make the bigger plays. As they go out to Laporta, he will bring up a third and two. Newsom chops out the legs. And as for us and trying to figure things out, the only thing we're trying to figure out is what's been up with St. Juice. Two bad games as they go to the outside. Will be a first down for St. Brown, and he gets clipped. Falling down, Castaneda looks to be a little bit shaken up after getting into it there with a lineman. He's going to have to head off the field. Now, the middle of our defensive line was not something I was looking to have to figure out. That's going to bring out Sweat as well as the rookie in Palmer, but immediately they attack the middle. Jameer Gibbs shakes one, not going to get away from Hodgins. That 91 speed saving the day there. But I've got to say, I appreciate the play call from the Lions. They're attacking right where we just had an injury. As they go right back to the running game, a much shorter rush, just three. Now we do have early indication on Castaneda's injury, and it's not good. He's out. It's a bruised sternum, and we're going to have to see a rotation at that DB spot as we get the tackle there, bringing up third and one. Now whether it was the original game plan or them just Having to go off the injury, it does seem like they're going to be a more heavy run team as Hodgins eats it up. Tackle for a loss of two at the 12. Well, it's just dialed up to perfection. Will force a field goal at the end of a pretty good drive, I would say, from the Lions. 
Though, if you ask them, they would probably be pretty disappointing in that drive. But either way, it gets them a lead as our offense heads out to start. And for us, we're spreading wide, gonna try attack a little bit downfield while still keeping with that run game. As we start with it, Chuba Hubbard will pick up a big gain. You could tell he wasn't sure what side of Bateman to choose there, but it's still a big gain either way. Well, that's the exact kind of thing we're looking for. Get that running game going, open up some deep shots, make both sides happy as we look for a pass here on play two. See if we could get that one out to Hubbard. It's actually a great adjustment there from Branch. He did his film work. It's either that or he just got really lucky. Either way, it's a big play there from the Lions. As we come out under center here, looking for some slants. Young just having to step up, take what he could get a gain of three as Hutchinson comes in from behind. But this Panthers offense, very comfortable in all different downs and distances here. As we come out two to the left-hand side, two to the right. It's all receivers and running backs here. As Young, he just looks to scramble. He lowers the shoulder, picking up the first down. Not exactly how we want him to take care of himself, but hey, we'll take the first down there. Showing a little aggression early on. Going back to the running game, Chuba Hubbard lowering the shoulder. He picks up three. Now, he definitely hasn't seen as big of a season to start as he's had in previous years. I want to say it's two seasons back-to-back -back going 2K total. But we don't quite need that from him. We've got other options as, speaking of options, Chenault with the toe drag down to the 18. And got to give Young a little credit there, too. That one put on him. As we look for Bateman towards that back right pylon, also have Boston to the back left. Then some other options sitting underneath as we will look for those underneath options as Faust going to pick up the first down down to the six. Now from here, we'll bring out Winters to help lead the way. Going to shift him to that left-hand side, try to get Chuba Hubbard to the outside. We don't quite get the contain, nor the juke. He could have also used a block there from Okwanu. It will be a loss of a few. Branch already doing well to get stuck in all levels of the defense. He's all the way at the back here, a second and goal. As we have an option here. I would like a delayed cross release from Boston. Leak out to the left-hand side where there's no one there. That could be nice, though they actually cover it. We had options, but all those options disappear, and Young forgot to throw the ball away. Drake Jackson picks up the sack back at the 28. They spent too long trying to buy time on that one. Now, what can we do on such a long down and distance? Well, how about a little bit of some play action as pass rush working its way back. Faust opens up, put it on him, and the rookie comes up a yard short. You've got to be aware of where you are on the field there. I mean, maybe just slow up a little bit and you walk in. Instead, it's first and goal, and he didn't miss by much. It's about an inch away. Barry checks in at running back. Ground and pound. Barry just gets that inch we did not have prior. We end our first drive with a touchdown, though it took a fourth down go. But the real question now is how does the defense respond? Not so good their first time out, but now they have a lead here. As they leave Jameer Gibbs wide open to the outside, defense comes flying over. We'll get the stop, but how about you just cover him on the snap? It's an interesting way to end the first quarter, but that it does. Send this one into the second. We have a 7-3 lead. We've given up some plays. We've made some plays. And honestly, that's just how this defense has played this year. As we start off this second quarter, tight look. We send the blitz to the outside. Newsome gets a hand on it, knocks it away. Now that has been some of the problem this year with the defense. We've put ourselves in good spot to force turnovers, but haven't quite been able to. We drop another one there as they go out to Gibbs. This offense from the Lions looks oddly familiar to how we started this series with the Panthers. They know their guy is Gibbs and they are just feeding him. As they look for a play action off of him here, get it outside. That's Amin Ra with a gain of three. Now, we do need to keep track of where he is lining up. If he's in the slot more often, maybe we do need to make an adjustment. Second and seven. They look for a pass down the sideline. And you guessed it, Amin Ra St. Brown, he got by St. Juiced. 
Though, to be honest, that was really just a cover two beater, what we were sitting in. So, Lions, they take the lead, 10-7, our offense coming right back out. And once again, they are chasing to start their drive. As we go back to Chuba Hubbard down the middle, he will pick up three. That seems to be a pretty common number for yards gained on our runs today. As we look to spread it out a little bit, got two to the left, one to the right which we will leak everyone out. Get this one out to Boston, and we tried to squeeze it. Not a smart choice. The recently traded for tackle will get, your guard will get the stop, but it's a turnover for Young. Quite apparent that he just did not see Dante Jackson sitting out there. Try to find the safe throw, but he was not quite looking as McCullough doesn't get the sack there. How? And Jamison Williams, into the end zone. Why is it every time we miss a sack like that, it's a touchdown off of it? Well, that's two plays we've got to shake off rather quickly. Offense right back out. Need to answer. Can't let this one start to snowball. As we got Bateman, he's wide open. Going to pick up a nice chunk, a little juke, and he steps out before trying to juke by Branch. And that's going to be a nice chunk into that 150 he was looking for. 29 yards will be on this stat sheet. As we might go back to him towards that sideline, it's underthrown. Get that one a little bit higher, and it's probably a catch. Instead, second and 10. Looking to set up the halfback screen, get some blockers out in front, follow behind him. Chuba Hubbard will instead run through a guy that Richards should have been blocking. Either way, can't go back and change it now. Bringing up third and two. Barry checks in at running back. As we look for just a simple run down the middle, though, Barry trying to stretch it to the outside, and he'll pick up the first down. That's all we needed, down to the 30. Could we have potentially used more there? Sure, why not? Always can, but he'll take the first down. Barry stays out there as they're covering pretty much everyone downfield, so Young goes to scramble and tackled again from behind, this time Aline McNeil. Young scrambling a lot more in this one than he has in previous games, as I like the look from the safeties here. Especially with Branch coming down. Looks like he might blitz off that left-hand side. Or at least rock some man coverage. Coming across, we've got Boston. And he sheds and into the end zone. That is the response we needed following the pick last time. Get us back on the board here. Now, defense, it's your turn. And really, what it comes down to is making sure we get some good man coverage here on Jameer Gibbs. Can't let him just find open space. As they look to go to him here, probably should have checked out of the play we had. Hodgins having to cross the defense, not a smart choice by us. And honestly, something we might even need to consider, maybe a little bit more zone play calling to ensure we have someone sitting there. As they go back to Gibbs, he's picked up, slammed down by Hartwell. Been a while since we've called his name. Well, let's try shaking it up a little bit here. We need to make sure we're locking down Gibbs. He's their guy on offense. Take him out of the game. We're good. As they go instead to Cook, who slips one tackle. Not going to get by Stockton, but that it's a first down on the jet sweep. We'll say despite being one and eight, seems like they know how to run their offense, or perhaps it just took up to this point in the season to figure it out. But it's working out pretty well for him here. As they dump it off to the outside, Tyler Edwards got to wrap up. Try to take out the legs of Laporta. He did not. Instead, first down. And that'll carry us to the two-minute warning. 17-14, Lions in front, and they're well in plus territory. And if our defense keeps struggling to make the plays, mostly against Gibbs, then they'll continue to keep the ball moving as Williams, he held on to that one. Well, I will say, interesting seeing how often he's actually out there playing despite being pretty low on the depth chart second and inches we send the blitz there's the play from edwards he knocks it away from gibbs just need a little bit more of that third and inches here goff makes a check we send the blitz forces the rollout throw down field and by the diving defender saint juice comes up empty yet again he was playing so good, and then again, two games ago, he just didn't have a good one against the Cowboys, and he has not regained his confidence there since. Edwards coming down, getting the tackle. Well, he needs a little bit of help from Newsom, but that'll do as the Lions call a timeout, 46 seconds left. I would really hate to give up any points here, at least a touchdown here before halftime. Let's make the plays defense. We send the safety blitz ball out for Williams, but too far out. 
St. Juice gets a little lucky. And that leaves them with one down here before they probably settle for a field goal as they look to just run it. Grover Stewart, eight up Gibbs will be a TFL and will bring up a field goal here to end the first half as they'll just let this one run down. Call a timeout, four seconds left. And after some mistakes here from us this first half, it will be a lead for the Lions. They take a six point lead into half. So as we usually say here, some things to clean up for sure. We put ourselves in more of a bad spot, really than the Lions have just outperformed us. We know what their offense is, it's Jameer Gibbs. Get him locked down, we'll be just fine offense. No turnovers, and that was really the only bad thing of that first half. The Lions are ahead mostly, I feel like, due to just possession. As for looking around the league, it is the Buccaneers who are also losing at halftime 14 to 10 against the other NFC team that we'll be facing in the Packers. As for the Dolphins and Vikings, sure, why not? It's the Vikings up 14-3 headed into halftime. They are 6-3. Meanwhile, the Dolphins trying to get above 500. And lastly, we have the Tennessee Titans and the Washington Commanders. 10-3 at halftime. Both teams off to a really bad start. Make Baker Mayfield the quarterback for the Titans and Hoffman, new quarterback of the Commanders. And as we get our second half underway, we can right this ship rather quickly as we start off with possession, as we're going to actually motion over Boston to that right-hand side, provide a little bit of some more lead block. See if that works, and that very much will work. Put Chuba Hubbard on the safety. He shakes one, and he picks up 13. Overall, I feel like that's a pretty good way to start this half. Men changed up, got three to the right-hand side, one to the left in Boston. Going to have the angle route from Chuba as well. Or Bateman, find the nice little spot there in between the zones and another safe juke up out of bounds. Now we haven't quite really attacked this team so far in the manner of which we were looking to. But again, I think that just comes down to possession. We what, maybe had three possessions in that first half. As Young having to come across, we had Chenault. But McDougal will get the sack. Maybe if he made that decision to scramble out a split second earlier, we've got the big play instead. We've got a long way to go for the first down, close to the 30. As we have Faust sitting across the middle, we'll hold on to it. Big body guy makes the big play. And yes, I count that as a big play because it essentially halves the distance we need here on third. Three to the right-hand side, one to the left. Chanel and Boston both look like a solid opportunity. Quick throw to Boston Young. You know what route he was running, and that was not a throw for it. Well, it's definitely not how we were wanting this drive to finish off. We will send out Ford. At least draw this one closer as it's a long field goal that he nails. Well, that makes it yet again a field goal game here. 2017 with the Lions. They head out now still with the lead, starting off with Gibbs, who gets smacked down at the knees from Hodgins. I've said it many times already this season, but Hodgins really has become like the guy for the defense at the linebacker spot as a great adjustment on the run as Gibbs breaks a couple tackles. They went so often with a swing out with several tight ends of that side to get the man on man. Instead, they run it to that weak side. Great play. Just gotta love when the AI, the CPU, if you will, makes the adjustment to match yours as Hartwell's gotta make the play. Instead, it's Tyler Edwards. Maybe with a TFL, they say it's back to the line. But either way, got to give props to the safety that we've been pretty harsh on the first couple games and the first couple games of his career. Expecting a lot from him as he doesn't quite read it there, but defense in a hole makes a stop, third and five. Now let's just get off the field here, get the ball back to our offense and try to take a lead. Bunch to the left, one to the right. We send a blitz. Everyone locked up well, but who doesn't lock it up? That is Williams. He drops it. Will be a punt. Now let's try to get this drive going here on offense. Been a little bit slow for us. We start off with Chuba Hubbard who tries to bounce. Actually not Chuba. That's Barry who starts off the drive. My bad. Just so used to assuming it's Hubbard out there. Gain a four for Barry. Hubbard comes out to follow. Chenault heading right down the numbers. Looks like it could be a good option for us. Or if we could find a nice little spot there for Faust in between the zones. Love it. 
Now, obviously, he didn't have the breakout opportunity today, but we did find out he's the superstar, and he's making some plays here. Now we go Hubbard down the middle. Maybe a face mask, maybe not. I don't know. Gain of nine either way. And honestly, I feel a little bit bad for Branch. We've targeted him a lot today. Second and one. They're sitting guys deep and covering the side we were trying to flood. So let's check the play to a run. That will probably open up a little bit better for us. Hubbard gets to the outside. Great blocks downfield by Bateman. But Dante Jackson came flying over for the tackle. Maybe a year or two ago, Chuba Hubbard takes that one to the house. Now let's see what we got here. First and 10, I want to send Faust downfield. Chenault towards that front pylon. It does open up for him. Get him out in some space. Not going to get by the safety, but we're down inside the 10 for goal to go. This is just where we've got to have the good play calls. We've struggled a little bit down here as we go. Chuba Hubbard trying to find the lane. None quite open up. Good stop there from the front seven. So let's change it up entirely then. Come out spread empty second end goal. Let's shorten the route there from Bateman. Get Chuba on an in and actually check that to a slant. Like that a little bit better. Time running out on the clock here, but we got Chuba does not hold on to it. Young threaded it, but we needed the hands. So instead we have third and goal back at the nine. Got a bunch to the right hand side. Bateman to the left. They're shading the outside, so let's just change that instead to a quick curl. Faust, I still like to the outside. I like the options we have here. And not the route at all that that was supposed to be. Faust turned it into a curl himself instead of the out route. And he's looking for a flag on it. And in a way, kind of agree. The corner did keep him from running the route, but we'll have to settle for the tie here. Ford... With yet another field goal makes it 20-20. And with time for maybe one more play left here in the third quarter. Defense, it's go time here. Make sure we lock down Gibbs. Don't give up more big plays downfield as they find Williams. Got to secure the first tackle after these catches. But that will bring us to the fourth quarter where it is 20-20. It's essentially a new game with only one quarter left to play. And now both teams have a far better read on the other. First and 10, Lions start up, or still back at least, at the 46. And there comes the sack. It is away. Loss of six. Haven't gotten much pass rush today, and it's a great time to start to get that pass rush. As they go back to Gibbs, Stockton. Beautiful play. Shuck the blocker and got the TFL. We saw him probably have his best game of the season last episode. Need to finish strong here. Third and 17 as they find the seam and the bad angle from Edwards. St. Brown down inside the 10 on third and long. Would have to go back to see who was manned up on that, but it was a blown man coverage. First and goal now. They go with a read option. It opens up for Gibbs, who is short. Barely did he not make it in there. Second and goal from the centimeter line. They go with a stretch. The backup checks in, and the backup's carry puts the Lions back in front. The Lions are smelling that trap game, and we've got to quickly score, get a stop from our defense, and put an end to this one. Look for a little bit of some play action to get us going here. We got Boston towards the sideline, and it comes up short, and Quandre Diggs picks it off. Well, that's not how you answer back. Young throws a second pick that it's just off the mark. It's not like it was a bad read. Fine throw there, just get it up into the outside rather than short into the outside. Lions take back over, looking for digs. Good, not good stop from St. Juice. Ends up being a gain of six. They're definitely in field goal range here. Well, defense, what's it gonna be? You gonna make the plays or not? It really comes down to you as it has all game long. We send the blitz, throw to the outside, quick stop, third and three. And this is really where we've got to have the play here. We could maybe allow the field goal and still come back in this one. Under five minutes left. We send the blitz. It's Stockton picking up the sack back at the 42. 
Do they still send out the kicker here? They don't trust it. They send out Robbins the punter. A huge play from Stockton. Keeps it a touchdown game. The punt, not very good either. Just a huge set of plays there from the defense. We had to have it, and they delivered. But now we need to have it from our offense. Young, it's time to put together your best game here. We got Faust coming across, and he misses it by about five yards. We can't afford that kind of game right now. Second and ten. Trips to the right, one to the left. We've got time. We could still play our game as we try to do. Sack comes in third and eleven. Another down that we've just got to have it here. Coming out with a trusty play call. This has worked out pretty well for us as long as we put it on him. Bateman coming over. Makes the catch. Toe taps right before he lands out of bounds. He hasn't had the touchdowns nor the yards he was looking for, but that is a clutch play. As we come right back out, give it to Chuba Hubbard. A little something new here gives us a little something like 10 yards. As we get back to it quickly. Three and a half minutes left. Let's try to flip this one. Get Faust to the outside. Everyone else coming across or on some quick stops. As we roll. We've got Bateman again. Put it on him. Good adjustment. Not much of a juke there. We're down to the 20. Let's keep the fast pace offense going here. With limited time left in this game. I would like to find a winner in regulation. As we just look for a quick stop. Bateman. He gets the catch. Gets down. Could have maybe stayed up and gotten to the end zone, but I'm not going to complain. Now on first and goal here, a little bit of an RPO dialed up. Get this one out to Boston, who does not break the plane. Oh, so close. Now can we get a push from the offensive line here? Chuba Hubbard has some space, and he pops it in. Jack Campbell shaking up on the play, but we find the tying score just over two minutes left. Now we just need that play from this defense. And we know that they don't trust their kicker. They opted to not go with it on the last one. About a 42, or they were at the 42. Coming across, it's picked off. That is Stockton. Going to give us the ball right back at the 35. They tried something new there, and it did not work out. What an absolute shift of momentum in here. Ford Field is shocked. Barry and the offense head out. We know exactly what we need to do. A little bit of some ground and pound here. Milk some clock. This is all on us now. Is it how you wanted this game to go? No, by no means. 27-27 against a 1-8 team. But what it does make is for a heck of a game to watch. Offense stays out in heavy. Barry down the middle. Third and inches. They don't give us the spot. But we all know what we need to do. Just stick to the ground and pound. Winters and the O-line. Create some space. As it's Barry for the first down. A short game. Timeout starting to come. But we're not going to do anything strange here. Just keep it simple. Winters motion out. Look for the stretch. Follow the blocks. Barry. Picking up another three, second time out. All we need is that field goal with Ford. We know he can hit. Would we take the touchdown? Sure. As we go with a stretch once again, follow the blocks. Barry, he has a space, but does not quite burst through it. But it does call the final timeout of the Lions. Third and one. Barry once again being called on here, and he will once again pick up the yardage and as we let time begin to just melt away here I'm, I have one risky call waiting here for us play clock down to one we will just hand this one off Chuba who had a gap also Young could have easily kept that maybe ran it in but it will set us up right down the middle and in Ford Field it is Ford out for the win just need the snap, the hold, and the easy kick. We extend our win streak, but boy, oh boy, did we leave that one way too close. The Lions, they could smell the victory, but Stockton and Barry snatched it from them at the very end. We walk away 30-27.
with the win. But we cannot let a 1 and 8 team do that. But I'll tip my invisible hat to the Lions. They they did really well in this one. And on top of it, we see here that Bateman was proud of his performance and yeah, I think he did play really well in that one. He didn't quite rack up the stats he was looking for, but still he was rather clutch for us several, several times. Now, another thing to tip my hat to, the Lions did a pretty good job of bottling up our running game. We've got some things, obviously, late on we drained the clock, but we didn't have that many big running plays as we've kind of been used to. But overall, we still ran for over 100, and we're going to get some nice XP there for our O-linemen. So in total, pretty good day. But as promised last episode, we were going to end this episode talking a little bit about some of the players in the next draft class before we get to the Green Bay Packers next episode, who are four and six, still a pretty tough battle. Six and four ourselves. Falcons also won. So we got to keep up step for step, but they did go through their buy. So now we are strictly just to a two game separation with us facing them in a couple more games. But let's talk draft. Now, in this class, there are three things I'm looking for. I would like to find some competition at the least for slot receiver. Chenault, he's been all right. He's made some plays for sure, but he also has seen some of his time regress a little bit. We basically took away all his playing time on the outside. Faust very much has deserved getting that time. But if we could find a nice just route runner for the middle, that'd be great. I need some catching in traffic. And there is Tyreek Turner, who does have that catch in traffic. However, the catching, that is a D, so a little bit concerning there. Uh, there is Devin Atkinson, who does, again, have that catch in traffic. That's a B, but the catching, a little bit worrisome. I don't really need the release for the slot. I need some route runners with some ability to catch the ball across the middle. Pat Harvey, maybe, again, might fit that. Just the overall hands in question. The second area I am looking at is defensive tackle. We saw today after Castaneda left the backups, they did not really do much. And that includes Jerome Sweat, who I've been a fan of. He just didn't really make any plays today. And Grover Stewart, he's getting older. We keep signing him to one-year deals, and eventually the time's just going to run out. Now, there is Julius Freeman. If I had the first pick overall, without a doubt. I'm going with Julius Freeman. I mean, this guy looks absolutely crazy. 6'2", 297, 22 years old, out of USC. A power rusher. He's got good to great strength. All around, I mean, just everything there looks fantastic. As for the skill set, A awareness, play rec, power moves, hit power, finesse moves, tackling. Hit power, don't know if I already said that. Maybe even impact blocking. B block shedding. However, he is injury prone. That's a D to an F. But Julius Freeman looks absolutely insane. But it would require a lot for us to trade up to what's probably going to be the number one pick. So after him, what are our options? Well, there is Paul Beckham. And he has some interesting ratings. He's listed as a run stopper. That's a B to a D. Though the power moves is also a B. Tackling is an A. That could be a solid option. 22 years old, out of Georgia, 6'2", 317, not necessarily a big dude, but he's athletic with some strength. I don't think he would be a bad guy to go after. Sure, tackler, which is something this defense needs, with A to C injury, that's at least on the higher end of most injuries. Could be a solid option. Behind him, still another round one projection, Zach Bryant, someone who I was looking to get a little bit more information on, and we did just do that through that previous week. 6'4", 300 pounds, 21 years old, out of Michigan. Again, really solid athlete. And we see a very balanced skill set. B finesse and block shed with awareness, play rec, tackling. Injury prone, though. So of the two, I would actually have to give the edge to Paul Beckham. Past those guys, you have an interior rusher here in Dom Lockley. Not necessarily something we're looking for. We're looking for more just a do-it-all kind of guy. In the round three to four, there is Anthony Boston, who has the really good finesse. A little bit of some block shed would be a depth guy for us, rotational guy. But that's about it in terms of top-end guys, and there are no defensive tackles hiding at left or right end. Now, the second spot I was looking at is the safety group. Trying to just find someone to maybe rival Shepard, or just see what we have. And there are a couple different options. Julius Lofton, round one to two projection, looks like he could be a very strong zone coverage safety. 
But I would like some guys to have a little bit of some man just in case. And looking through the list here, there's one guy here that I'm interested in who has potentially that ability. And that is Jake Schwartz, round two to three. 5'11", 195, 23 years old, out of Bama. He's a pretty good athlete. And on top of that, he's got good pursuit. Tackling is not too bad for a free safety at a C. He's got some hit power, awareness. We know the zone is a B. If the man is also a B, maybe even a C, I might be interested. However, there is one other guy who I also have interest over at the strong safety spot. And that is a little bit down the lines here. Day three pick in Joe Gilchrist. Now, unfortunately, I did not get any extra information on these two safeties, despite them being focused players. It's Madden. 5'9", 196, 23 years old out of LSU. From the athletic standpoint, still really solid. Maybe a step down from some of the others we've seen. Skill set wise, the play rec, that is concerning. Probably why he's a day three, but the coverages might be good. This would probably be a depth pick that needs to develop for a couple years, but I'm keeping all the options open. But as the season moves along and we get a little bit more information on these guys and really start to dial in, I'll update you on specific players rather than position groups. Those are the main three I'm looking at, and they could they might also be addressed in free agency, but those are the ones I was really looking for in the draft. All in all, great that we kept the win streak alive today. We need that to get back to the Panthers and Get in that conversation of being the NFC South champs this year. We got my rival next in the Packers, 4-6. and six, Still, though, a very solid team, Rashad Gary. And looking at their overall, just how they're performing this year, they're slightly better than the Lions, who gave us trouble today. So we need that win. We need another win in Week 13 against the Falcons. If the Falcons happen to lose in Week 12, well, then just like that, we find ourselves top of the NFC South. So a lot on the line here late on this season. Make sure you stick around, hit that bell on the bottom right, or scroll down, hit the sub button. They both do the exact same thing. And while you're hitting buttons, hit the bell icon so you're notified of when these videos go live. This series every single Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Plus, we just started a new state-only challenge yesterday in the Kentiana, Kentucky and Indiana. Combine the name there. State-only challenge. And now, I don't want to ruin anything there or spoil anything, but boy, did they get off to a surprising start. So make sure you check that one out. And until next time, where we host the Cheeseheads, we'll see you then.